Test-driven development is the practice that most impacted my career as software developer. I can see a huge difference on my code on the before and on the after test-driven development. It's the number one thing that I recommend to all developers that ask me what they should learn. Why do I love it? First of all, peace of mind. I trust my code. I trust my tests. I can push to production with confidence on it. I know that when I get back to that code and I change something, those tests will be there to help me out. Once you get it, you will see that it's really simple. But I promise you this. You don't want to get back again. Test-driven development is basically a three-step process. When you first start by writing your tests, then writing your code to fulfill those tests, then you move on and you finally think about design. And you do all those things step by step. And today we will see that in practice. Let's code something using TDD. And to save us some time, let's go with Fizzbuzz, just because it's a problem that most of you should know for sure. And it's simple and we can focus on the TDD workflow. Let's start from the bottom up. And first things first, let's create a solution. Now I will create a project using the XUnit template. You can use NUnit, MES tests, whatever you want. I'm doing this through .NET CLI. You can do it using Visual Studio, Rider, whatever. Now that I have my test project, I will just install a package that I really love when I'm writing tests, that is Fluent Assertions. Feel free to use Shoodly or even the assertions that you already have on the framework for testing that you are using. It's installed, so now let's jump into Rider. Okay, I will be using Rider. You can use Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, whatever. Pick your own tools, the ones that you feel comfortable. So first things first, as you can see, I only have one project that is my test project. And this is the way that you should start when you are doing TDD. You start by the tests. Now let's go to our unit test class and I will just paste here the problem that we'll be solving. Okay, so it's basically Fizzbuzz. If it's a number that is divisible by three and five, Fizzbuzz. If it's a number divisible by three, fizz. If it's a number divisible by five, buzz. Otherwise, it will return the number. First thing that I'll be doing, I will rename this test class to give a name that is meaningful. Fizzbuzz tests. And now let's write our first test. And according to TDD, you should first write those tests that are really obvious to you, okay? Those ones that look like a really obvious step, a really small step, and one that seems a good case for me is this one of the number should return as a string the exact number if it doesn't met one of the following conditions. So for example, the number one or number two should respect this case. So let's implement the case for the number one. I will name this test as given a number not divisible by three or five, then returns the number as string. And the first step is really important. This one is the one that usually you will see people going first with implementation just to create the outline of the application and only then come to tests. But it's not that way that you should go when you are doing TDD because TDD will influence your design. So when you are writing your tests, what you should do is basically do a kind of a daydreaming, okay? You start thinking, how would you like to use this thing that you are building? You start to imagine the best names, the best user experience, the best developer experience when you are writing these tests. On my case, what I would be doing in this case is, I know that this thing should return a string, right? So I will say that I have a string that is my result. To execute something that will give me that string, how do I imagine that? Is it a new class that I'll be creating? Is a static method? So I will go with the approach of having a static method. First thing that I will be doing is saying, okay, I have fizz buzz game, okay? And that fizz buzz game will have a method that will name play. This method should receive a number according to what we understand from the problem. So I will provide number one. As you can see, this code doesn't compile. That's normal because we didn't implement it yet. But what you can do now is that using your IDE of choice, you can simply use the tools and start creating the types that you need. Okay, I, I want this class and I want to have this method. This will still fail because I am throwing in a not implemented exception. So I will just return a string to see this test going red. Because remember, our first goal is always to see tests going red. So let's do one assertion to do that. So what we want to assert is that our result should, by the way, I'm doing dot should because I'm using fluent assertions, should be one. Perfect. Let's run our tests. Okay, it's failing. 
perfect is exactly the stats we want so our next step moving this test from red to green so what we can do what is the minor step to make this test going green the one that we can do is okay if i'm providing one i should receive exactly the same number so you can go with something as simple as this you can fold the code okay and it's okay to do this thing because you are fulfilling the requirement so let's just run the test once again green perfect now is that moment when you bring other numbers just to test this condition i could do this in different ways by having multiple test methods whatever but on this case what i'll be doing is just using a feature of XUnit that is a theory. I will provide some numbers like one, two, four, and seven, and I should receive that number here. The result should be equal to the number as a string. So what will happen now is that when I run the tests, I have three tests failing because remember, I'm always returning the one. So each one of these is a kind of a different test. So I have those three failing. So let's go back to our implementation and convert this one into that is being received as a string. So now let's run your, our tests again. And voila, I have a green one. As you know, TDD has that workflow of red, green refactoring. And you may notice that moments ago, I skipped the refactoring part. And that is okay, because you can always iterate into red and green the same way that you can iterate inside of the refactoring part. I only move forward with the refactoring when I feel that I have that need when I feel that there's something that I want to improve. And now it's the time when I want to take a look into my tests and see if there's something that I want to change. Let's do some refactoring. Let's look into our source code and see what we can do. And look into our source code. First thing that I want to do is to move this to outside of that project. The first thing that we'll be doing is just move our Fizzbuzz game to a different file. Run the tests again. Green, but I'm still not happy with this because I don't want the source code of my application, the logic inside of the test project. So what I'll be doing is just create the project itself that I want. This time let's create it using Rider and I will create a simple class library named Fizzbuzz and I will move my Fizzbuzz game into that new project. And now let's just add a reference to the Fizzbuzz test so it knows the new project. Added the reference, now let's just run the test once again. Green, perfect. Let me just take a look here if there's something else that I want to refactor. And in fact, there's one thing that I want. I don't want this named as an I. I want this as number refactored, run the test once again. Okay, let's move on. So to simplify your life, one thing that I really like to do and is really useful when you are doing TDD is you just split the screen in half and you can see on one side the test that you are writing and on the other side the code. Let's just create a new test. This time let's name it as given a number divisible by five, then returns buzz. And once again, let's think what's the smallest thing that I can do to check if, if I provide a number that is divisible by five, it returns buzz. Okay, so first step, as we have done moments ago, this bus play five, five is divisible by five, results should be buzz. Run the test once again, and it failed, perfect. So what can we do to fulfill this test, so to move on? So the obvious thing to trick the system is doing, if the number is equal to five, then return buzz. This should be a green test now, okay, perfect. So let's keep moving as you remember, as we have done in the previous iteration. So, so once again, let's use a theory and provide some data to our test. Let's use a five, a 10 and a 20. All of them are divisible by five, receive a number and use that number to call the function. So let's run the test. What I expect now is that I will have two failing tests because remember, this one is still passing because I'm providing five, it returns a buzz. So the other two should fail and yeah, Two tests failing. Perfect, let's keep moving. So what I know is that I need to look into my test and see what's the smallest thing that I can do to make this test go green. So this time, since I have two cases that all of them should be divisible by five, so now I will check here if it's divisible by five and that case should return buzz. Let's take a look to see if this is true. And it's green, so we are once again in a green state. Look into our test case and into our source code, I don't see anything now that I really feel the need to do a refactoring. So let's keep moving on to the next step. Now we come to a moment where I like to be pragmatic. We can either follow all these steps that I showed you 
and create a new test, just provide the number three. Then I will go in here into the test. I will check if the number is equal to three, I return fees, but I prefer to be pragmatic. And at the moment, I already feel confident that the three will be exactly the same idea as the five. So what I can do instead is going here, copy this test. Many may not agree with me on this approach, but is how I like to do TDD. I like to feel productive instead of doing them things. So I will provide here the number three, the number six and the number nine. Okay. So given the number divisible by three, it should return fees. Provides the number, number goes, and let's say here that it should be a fees. Let's just run the test now that we created these tests. And as expected, we have three tests failing, okay? What can we do on this side to make those tests pass? What I will be doing this time is, since I know that it's exactly the same idea, I will just copy this thing, paste it. I know that this is a three, this should be fees and run the tests. Perfect, I really like this thing. Let's keep moving on. We have now in the green stage, let's take a look if you want to refactor something. Look into this source code. There's one thing that pops out to me, that is this condition and this condition look like kind of the same thing to me. I'm just doing a is divisible by, right? So let's create a method to do that. So I'll create an extension method to ints. That extension method will receive a number and based on that number, we'll check if it's divisible by or not. So now it's just a question of calling this function here, is divisible by, by three, is divisible by five. Let's see if our refactoring has succeeded or not. Perfect, let's keep moving on. So now we have the three, we have the five, we have the other numbers, but there's one extra condition here on top that is, if you provide a number divisible by three and five, should return fees plus. Once again, what I will be doing is exactly the same idea. I will just look into this test. I will basically copy it and let's think about numbers that are divisible by three and five. Or 15, for example, 30 and 60. It's divisible by three and five, then returns fees plus. Review the assertion and let's play the game. And we are back on the red state, right? So we have three tests failing because I have three different values that I'm providing. I can see multiple options here. I can either start adding this string to, to a variable and trying to combine it with this one, but I will do the most obvious step to me, that is just copy this thing, paste it on the top, and it should return FizzBuzz if it's divisible by three, but also by five. Okay, let's run the tests. Back to a green state, awesome. Let's take a look now if we can refactor something. There's a lot of things that I can do here. And from my personal experience, different people will refactor this thing in a different way. I will do one first step that I want to do. I don't like to see these two conditions here. So I have two possibilities here. I either create a variable where I start to append fees and buzz. And so I can remove this thing. Or for example, if I go here and just convert this to 15, and remove this condition because every number that is divisible by 15 is in fact divisible by three and five. Let's just run the test to see if my assumption is correct. Perfect, but I'm not happy at all at the moment. I don't like to see the structure of this code. Maybe there's something different that I can do here. And there's one feature that I really love on latest versions of .NET that is switch expressions. Let's see if I can do this with a switch expression, right? So what I will need to do is a return number switch and now let's take a look onto those conditions so when the number is divisible by 15 it should return this bus and let's do the same for the other ones do the same for the three and five and let's take a look into our default condition that is basically returning the number as a two string now i completely avoided those if statements and multiple returns and i convert this into a switch expression just because i really like them and i like the way that this code looks like. So let me just run the test to see if I didn't break anything. Perfecto. Another small thing that I can do here is converting this to an expression body, run the tests, still going green. As you can see, I can iterate into this thing, trying to find the solution that I really like. And I'm comfortable because I trust my tests, okay? They are there. And while they are green, I'm in a good state. If you want to see me exploring other topics regarding DDD, just leave a comment down below. And if you want to do a good job on your refactoring stage, just take a look onto this video.
I will see you soon, and in the meanwhile, just keep things simple.